It's the KSO Show. I'm Derek Young, joined by Drew Galloway on this fine Thursday afternoon. We just wrapped up with the coordinators' uh, press conferences. We, as we heard from both the offense coordinator, Courtney Messingham, and the defensive coordinator, Joe Klanerman, to kind of shed light a little bit on what their reaction and thoughts were from the previous tilt, obviously, in Arlington for the All-State Kickoff Classic at AT&T Stadium with Stanford and to preview the matchup, obviously, with the Southern Illinois Salukis. We'll just kind of share our thoughts on what we heard from both. Uh, the first man up, of course, I think it's going to be this every week. It was Courtney Messingham. Uh, the offense was a, probably kind of an uneven performance, but I think he was a little bit more upbeat than I anticipated. Yeah, he was a little more upbeat than I thought. Um, he talked about how they started fast, and even though they had the interception in the first quarter, that he liked the aggressiveness, and he admitted that they started slow in the third quarter, but he said that the first thing that they needed to do is execute more, and he thought that they had good play designs but didn't execute, but he also said that they need just a better game plan in general for the second half. Yeah, that, that's certainly true. He, he also was pretty upbeat about the offensive line and, and, and how they played, probably aside from the third quarter. He probably felt that way just about everyone. Was there anything uh, else in particular that really stood out? I know he said, you know, uh, he liked what they were doing early on. As you said, a fast start stayed away from any third downs, I believe, in the first quarter was a stat that he uh, he addressed. Uh, his thoughts on Skylar Thompson, what did you feel about that? Um, I mean, I was, I guess, not really surprised, but everybody has kind of talked about how they think it's just a one-off from Skylar Thompson, that he was a little bit rusty, and it's just because he hasn't played in a long time. They expect him to be better, and I think everybody kind of expects him to be better. But he was really positive about Skyler's performance and just kind of attributed a lot of the struggles to Rust because that was his first game in almost a year. Yeah, the downfield throws were inaccurate as Courtney Messingham laid out, and he believes that those are probably going to solve solve itself as the season goes on just with more reps, just with, with more, more snaps, more throws, more games. Only 45 snaps on the day against Southern Illinois, or no, sorry, against Stanford, something that he doesn't, Gordon Maskin doesn't envision happening um, uh, again. And he actually, if there was one player where it seemed like he really singled out for just almost being proud of the way that they performed, I thought it was Nick Lenners. Yeah, he really gushed about Nick Lenners. He talked about how he thought that Nick Lenners really knows his role of being that in-line tight end, but also could flex out. And he even singled out a play where I believe Lenners was – uh, running a route and it was either going to be a hold on him or the defender and it ended up being just called off sides and he said that that kind of shows that Leonard's is a bit of a threat on the outside and that flex tight end spot instead of just being an inline blocker at tight end. Connor Fox probably not close to coming back it doesn't sound like but when he does Messiaen made sure to say that he would be in the rotation and receive snaps when when he returns to full health and is able to go, we don't expect that to happen against Southern Illinois. He did say uh, we might that we could have seen Shabazzan Taylor last week. Uh, the 45 snaps uh, probably made it difficult to get him on the field. Um, could have late in the game, but at that point, probably not worth it. And probably will see him this week. Yeah, I I think I'd anticipate seeing Taylor play like a little bit like 15 20 snaps they just need to get his feet wet and to kind of clear that mental hur hurdle with him to get him on the field more yeah 15 20 snaps even might be ambitious we're, we're probably talking in the neighborhood i would think of seven to ten flipping over to the defensive side of the ball uh we heard from joe Klanerman, obviously and again another very upbeat coach that seemed thrilled with what he saw from his own guys yeah, he really talked about how he was impressed with how a lot of their guys also know their role. He mentioned uh, Reggie Stubblefield made a play that was a big play on third down to on that pass breakup, and that there were a handful of guys that only played a hand that played a handful of snaps that ended up doing something positive and played really well. Yeah, what, what were some other players they singled out? Because obviously it wasn't just Reggie Stubblefield. I think we we probably heard him rave about maybe three or four guys yeah he talked about uh Khalid Duke and how his pass rush was probably one of the best that we're going to see all season long by anybody uh he talked about Eli Huggins's big sack and how that was one of the biggest plays of the game to him and then he really talked about Cody Fletcher and Daniel Green and how they played and thought that they played excellent 
Yeah, Daniel Green probably received the most praise, I would think, out of anyone on on for, during that press conference from Joe Klanerman. Probably not going to see a whole lot of changes from the defense. You'll still see the three-man front. You'll still see the four-man front. Um, maybe even more to three-man because you, you're going to see RPOs, even reverses against Southern Illinois. Daniel Green obviously misses the first half. Did he shed light on who may take those snaps? Yeah, he said that it's likely that Nick Allen is going to start for the second or for the first half of this Southern Illinois game. Yeah, and Nick Allen did, I think, receive the third most snaps at linebacker a week ago just ahead of Austin Moore. I think he had nine snaps. I think we saw Austin Moore for four or five. So those are obviously the next two up. Wayne Jones, Ryan Hennington, uh, that they're they're probably that third linebacker if they go into a more of a heavy personnel look don't expect to see that much against uh southern illinois of course i think the last health thing to or or availability thing to touch on aside from just you know daniel green's uh status obviously missing in the first half would just be the availability of jerome mcpherson i he played, uh, still played a little um, around 20 snaps. I, he had him for 21. Klanerman did. I think I had him for 20, but it didn't seem that he played that much. So he probably ended up playing more than what most of us felt. But w- what's his status heading into it? Because I know he's probably he's dealing. I th- we'll, we'll say this: it was a little bit of a health thing that probably held him back last week, and that's why you saw Ross Elder, I think, start alongside T.J. Smith and Russ East because they did go with more of a three-day safety look in the back. Um, I, maybe we see more Mc, Mc, McPherson as a starter. We'll see, but he was held back a little bit of a stomach a stomach issue, I, th- I think, as well. But um, just just how much do we expect him to play in Southern Illinois? Uh, from what Klanerman said, it sounds like J Mac is a full go and is healthy and is ready to go, and he's really excited to see what J Mac can do on the field Saturday. Absolutely. Uh, you, you touched on a lot of the players, obviously, that stood out and or that Joe Klanerman raved about. One of them being Daniel Green, obviously Reggie Stubblefield, Eli Huggins, Khalid Duke with his exceptional spin move on that they got him the sack. Obviously, um, against that double team, uh, that was certainly an impressive feat. In, any lasting impressions or, or uh, I guess, yeah, just give me your lasting impression on what you heard from Joe Klanerman or something that we just haven't shared yet. I think the lasting impression that I have from Joe Klanerman is how upbeat he is and how he wants his guys to have a lot of fun. Like, I think he'd said that he wants uh, this defense to set the NCAA record for most fun and that they have three hours every week on Saturdays to do as much things that they can for us as in, like, the team and that they aren't very selfish. And that he said that they aren't, they're the least selfish team that he's had since he's been here and that everybody plays for each other and he just wants them to have a lot of fun. Yeah, and he's certainly not the only one that said that. We've heard that throughout fall camp quite a few times, whether it be from coaches, players. I know Skylar Thompson said it as well. That was coordinator corner, as we like to call it, on the KSO show as we recap what we heard from Joe Klinerman, from Courtney Messingham, the coordinators for the your Kansas State Wildcats. It's Thursday. Tomorrow is Friday, just the day before the first home game um, and first time a packed Bill Snyder Family Stadium since 2019. So everyone certainly excited for for that contest as they'll, they'll host the the salukis and obviously we are doing a kso show nearly every day mostly every day our goal is for every day tomorrow you will hear grant flanders and myself Derek young as we preview the game with the salukis and on saturday night after the game we'll also recap it with the instant reaction podcast as well so you're listening to us on youtube this is the kso show give us a like Give us, you know, subscribe to us if you haven't. It always helps us out. Comment, do everything you can, and then it'll help us out. And we can continue churning out a top product for you. If you haven't subscribed to K State Online, I think it's worth it, and that you should. For Drew Galloway, I'm Derek Young. You've been listening to the KSO Show, and tell your friends.